How surprising is it that there won't even be a family reunion? Well, it's not the most shocking plot twist you've ever seen, is it? No. It's so, it makes me genuinely really sad. Now, you mm. and I, Danica, both of hot-blooded Italian descent. Yes. We know about family dramas and blood wars that go on sometimes for generations, jokes aside, but I can't imagine the kind of um, enmity that there would have to be between, for example, my brother and I for us not to talk. I mean, we've, we've, we're pretty good mates and we've, we don't always agree, but even when we've been bluing about something or another, I cannot imagine a turn of events that would have me not speaking to my own brother. Harry... Bless his cotton socks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he's living in this constructed reality and the two juxtaposing grabs that you just used mm. are a perfect example of that. When, you, when a person chooses that posture of victimhood, it consumes everything. It absolves them from taking responsibility from their own behaviour because everything is everybody else's fault. Absolutely. It makes me sad on a human level but on a also, on another level, I wouldn't want to hang out with him. He's such a goddamn punk. <laughs> well, he's a serial nuisance, as I said in my uh, introduction. Louise, and just going on from that, how sad is it that this is going on and he's going to London and there's mm. not even a catch-up no, with his own father? Exactly, yes. But, you know, we're talk looking at two grown men here and it's on Harry to build that bridge with his brother mm. and actually repair the relationship because it was so good when they were younger and when in the early days of William and Kate's relationship, they were the great threesome that went out and they were always happy and everyone was happy to see them and they built such a great young royal brand. But now we're looking at a situation where Harry and Meghan's two children and um, Kate and William's three kids, they will grow up not knowing each other. And that's the real tragedy, I think. These little cousins won't get to know each other in such a tight brood. I don't think anywhere in history we've had the cousins separated like no, that. It's so sad that they won't form that bond. And we also heard this week that the former royal butler, Grant Harold, he shared some insights into Prince Harry's relationship with his brother, Prince William. He said the pair have gone from best of friends to non-existent. I mean, Gemma, it just goes on to what you were saying. You can't imagine not speaking uh, ever to your own brother. How much of this, though, do you think is Harry's doing? Well, I, I mean, you know, from an observer's perspective, it's certainly, you know, he's the one out there lobbing, pardon the, the military analogy, but he's the one out there lobbing grenades at everybody all of the time. And, and I think perhaps there's an element, and of course I'm an excellent psychologist, well, I go for it, <laughs> as well as a royal correspondent, but um, to Louise's point, you've you got to own your stuff. Part of being an adult is going... I, I messed up or I felt this and this is why. It's his job and maybe, you know, per, maybe he needs tough love from his family. You don't just get to come in. It's the analogy, you know, using... Um going to the bathroom inside the tent or outside the tent? Yes. The clean version. Absolutely. Keep him outside the tent. Yeah, no. well, they clearly are keeping him outside the tent.